Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. People can speak for themselves as to whether they're for a situation or against it. I'm going to be talking about Imo State, the ruling, whether it's a victory for the people or daylight robbery. The recent Supreme Court ruling that saw Governor Ihedioha deposed and instead Uzo Dimma shunted from fourth place to first place by apparently a unanimous ruling of seven Supreme Court judges brought tears to my eyes. In what jurisdiction are we to believe that 333,000 illegally excluded votes, a situation ratified by INEC, I hasten to add, were miraculously found and now endorsed by the highest court in the land, thereby resulting in over 426,000 votes that led to the APC candidate taking the lead from the rear. Has Imo State not suffered enough? The facts speak for themselves. Terrible roads, seriously neglected infrastructure, vulgar mismanagement of state resources, and a groaning populace akin to what led to the biblical proclamation of God to Pharaoh via Moses when he said, let my people go. I heard from sources on the ground that news of the ruling that Ihedioha was deposed was greeted by scenes reminiscent of a state in mourning. I have been made aware that there is more to the ruling than meets the eye. The backstory is that INEC may have acted ultra-virus in disqualifying the votes in over 300 polling stations because of fears that the accumulated votes allegedly garnered by the APC candidate, Uzo Dimma, could not legally be accounted for. Would that justify the Supreme Court ruling, however? Hmm. An insider report from a senior member of INEC states as follows. INEC didn't certify the results from the three, 388 polling units Uzo Dima applied to the tribunal, which issued a subpoena to the Nigerian police. A deputy commissioner of police tendered what they call the police copies of the results. Although rejected by the election petition tribunal and the appeal tribunal, the Supreme Court overruled them. It added the figures and declared Uzo Dima winner based on the highest number of votes. Nothing was said about spread, i.e. the requirement that a candidate must also score at least a quarter of the votes in two third of the LGAs in a governorship election. While determined to carry out the orders of the Supreme Court to issue Senator Hope Uzodimma, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, a certificate of return as the duly elected governor of Imo State, and withdraw the one it previously had given to Emeka Ihedioha of the People's Democratic Party, the leadership of the Independent National Commission is still reeling from shock over the verdict, close quote. Well, we're reeling too. This sits side by side with figures cited from Premium Times and other mainstream media, referencing the announcement of the state's returning officer, which show the following. And I quote, Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Agriculture, Umundike Abia State, Francis Atunta, gave the total registered voters across the state's 27 local government areas as 2 million 221,008, and the total accredited voters as 823,743. He said a total of 25,130 votes were cancelled across the state, with total valid votes as 714,355, while the total votes, votes cast is 739,485, close quote. These figures show a significant discrepancy in the current figures of 927,630 when you include the votes validated by the Supreme Court ruling. As we know, numbers can't lie. It appears that most people smell a rat and it stinks. 
It seems that currently the voice and will of the people account for very little in the race of a few to divide up the booty that is our state commonwealth. We must more than ever drive this particular conversation until it resonates in the corridors of power. We must move for e-voting and transparency towards future elections. We must keep pushing for accountability to ensure that what seems like daylight robbery is never again camouflaged as the people's victory. I, I think um, there's a lot of misinformation in your uh, advocacy. Um, first, you said that, um, that uh, the 333,000 votes were excluded because INEC thinks. Um, that's INEC opinion. And if INEC, you know, in INEC's opinion, they wrongfully excluded because they thought they were vote manipulated votes. The it's now the onus is now on um, it's left for the petitioner, the man who is alleging that those votes were is to approach <coughs> the courts. And it is within the court's power to either accept his argument or refuse the, that argument. And so if you agree, like INEC have agreed, that there were indeed 333,000 votes, but that they rejected those votes, what they ought to have done would be that these 333,000 votes were manufactured. This is the original one. This is the re-vote from this area. In the absence of that, the court will accept what is before them. <coughs> and you cannot use words of mouth to dispute what is in a document. They also said that they were not certified by INEC. Original documents does not need INEC certification. What happens was the policeman said, this were document handed over to us by INEC at the polling units. After the election, what usually happens is, if you are a, an election observer, or you are a party agent, or you are a security agent at the polling unit, they are triplicates of the results. Once they are prepared and duly signed, you are handed a copy. So all of these policemen that went to monitor election in those areas, I think they reported copies to the area command. And so the area commander was subpoenaed by the court to come tell what the, you know, the document he received. And he brought the document and said, these were the documents I received. And in those documents, APC candidates scored 333,000 votes that were not included in these votes. Cumulate, cumulated, calculated vote. So what INEC and the petitioner ought to have done would have been to disprove those votes using documents and witnesses from those same polling units. In the absence of that, you can't by words of mouth say, oh, there were irregularities, and so that was why. And then when you cancel votes, if you, if you accept a vote, you add it to the figure. Even when you reject a vote, you must still add it to the total figure to say, this vote was casted, or cast, sorry, but we rejected it. And so it will be part of your vote rejected. If you look at the figures that you read out, it was only 25,000 votes that they allegedly invalid. rejected. As canceled, invalid votes. No, yeah. the cancelled votes. Mm. So what that means is that in taking cognizance of the fact of this 333,000 vote. They didn't even record it at all as whether okay. valid or invalid vote. Okay. So they didn't form part of the number of total number of accredited votes from the state. So can, 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 can the complaint then be laid against what has just happened in the Supreme Court, really? Yeah. No, what happened? Because what they've done, there must be another basis to bring up a case. It won't be the same case. You won't call it the same case. No, there must it is. be a way what? to come back at this matter. No. If no. indeed no. there may be regular votes. No. What happened was, yeah. the, let me explain it in everyday's language. What happened was, election result were, was announced. And after the result was announced, the man who came forth, scored 96,000 votes, said, look, there is 300 and 33,000 votes that were not added to my vote. If added, I will come first. So tribunal, please look at these issues. So the tribunal looked at it and said, no, the documents were dumped on us. Yeah. So did but you anyway, want to say, one yeah. One thing I do, I mm. mean, let's put all that 
to the side. Ekene's advocacy really does make sense. We need more transparency. We need to move on to e-voting. Yes, we need all those things so that we can mitigate against this exact situation See, happening but then again. Quickly, it wasn't about the yeah, fact so that both parties, one is better than the other. They are all the same. In as far as I'm concerned, but we truly need to elevate. I mean, there's our more. There's, there's clearly more we can say on this Absolutely. thing. Do you want yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. Just mm, to add that e-voting. I mean, this just makes a case that we need to try something else, mm. or in addition to what we're doing, yeah. there's need to migrate to e-voting. Okay. You know? Maybe on another occasion, I'll, yeah. I'll have my rebuttal of Libras's arguments. But for now, let it let it stand. A crucial part of holding ourselves to high standards is the role your feedback plays. On our special edition, Miriam Jamiu says. Ekene, Chuka, Emeka, and of course, you know, Uche and Seidu, and Libras, and the rest of the pioneer of the advocates have done a good job by putting these people together. They actually surpassed my expectations. Kudos to every one of them and all the people that have appeared on the advocate. Thanks, Miriam. The advocate is as much about you as it is about us, the spirit of the advocate in all of us to keep pushing forward for a better society. Uh, on sanitary pads for girls in schools, which is driving a lot of conversation, Akinjide Akinshola, a guy, says, this is the best advocacy for women I have ever watched or listened to in this part of the world. Interesting, very enlightening. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Tokwe Brass says, wow, never looked at sanitary pads this way. <laughs> Thanks, Treasure. Please let's know what we can do to support. I'm sure Treasure will be getting back to you. P.S. It was so good to hear your eloquent voice again after so many years, took me right back to broadcasting school. Treasure, you clearly have a, a fan club. We all keep flying the flag for the sake of a better society. So do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Chuka holds our government officials to a standard as concerns their job description. This is certainly one area where Chuka ain't turning over a new leaf. Carry go, Chuka. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.